sense of the potato as a very embodied shape. So that's one. You, you started your presentation talking about the distinctions between artificiality and, mm -hmm. nature. and nature and so on. And there's been a long history of thinking about natural artifice or artifice in nature. And an essay that you might be interested in is Roger Calois' Mimicry and Legendary Psychasthenia. It's a very old, old essay. I'll send it to Jean Marie and, and maybe and pass it on to uh, Analia. Mm -hmm. Because it's an essay that talks very much about the artifice within nature. And I think you're in that space where we, where perhaps the separations should not be made quite so absolutely, or be conceived of quite so absolutely, as you might be doing right now. But you might see really where the, the mixture between the artifice and the so-called natural, where they actually blend. Yeah, that's why I said like, they work as complements also. Yeah. 
shape of potato being cheaper than the other and then your brother who works in like, uh, not particularly great circumstances, I guess. Uh, so it's like uh, there is there's some like, really strong political elements to your work that I personally would like to see you make more explicit.
consists of like I know the smell, the mat, so this kind of relationship. So he, he spends a lot of hours inside of, inside this place, uh, the kitchen. And so but he's really happy inside the kitchen, you know, it's not like um, he really wants to go there. So it's like he likes yeah, he loves him. I mean he's part of a group of uh, people, uh, healthy people. So he works with him, so he's just like really happy there. So that's why I chose that place also. And um, and so he himself in that kitchen has to to peel the potatoes. He also makes a distinction between potatoes. He just leave aside the ones that he doesn't want to peel, and he chooses the ones that he wants to peel. So. I don't know, there's some kind of uh, this distinction or uh, selection that happens everywhere. I would love to hear more about his relationship to those potatoes. Like how he decides which ones he wants to peel. I guess he decides um, in terms of uh, which one is easier to peel because it's just uh, sometimes it's difficult for him to use the tool, that's why he cut himself sometimes. But and um, yeah, but I think that it's related to that. And I think that he won't choose those ones because, I mean, he knows that he's handicapped and sometimes when my, when my father says something like, okay, well, we have to park in this place because it's for handicapped people, my brother says, I'm not the handicapped one. My father says, okay, I'm, I'm the handicapped one. So we just like <laughs> make some jokes about that. So yeah, but he won't choose one of those potatoes for sure. Um, but I choose those potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so the last one is not a real potato, though. It's just uh, it's I heard. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, O'Neill and Michael, I've got you down. Yeah. Um, I think I mean people are kind of circling around this a little bit. I think it's interesting, especially compared to what you showed last time in Berlin. Uh, you've removed your brother visually from it. The only time that we saw him in this work, he's been blurred out and is hiding behind a potato uh, in such a way that it's hard to tell that he's not normally shaped. You know, the, the way you presented that, he looks normally shaped. Yeah, but because we have the potato, I don't Yeah, I guess you don't need to, but I, I just thought that was an interesting thing, and I was wondering. Yeah. Why you made that choice to remove him? Um, I mean, maybe these are his hands, but I don't. Yeah, know. they are his hands. Uh, I find it interesting to show uh, his hands in this particular space, and uh, and he has very interesting hands also. They're very flexible, and he has only one of these lines, not three. So I don't think it doesn't matter. But um, I didn't. Uh, I didn't choose perhaps to show him because I didn't need it for this work. Um, so I'm making like con constantly these analogies. So perhaps I just don't need to show him. Uh, I don't know, maybe because of that. And, and there's something that uh, I removed the body for this work. I just always use bodies. Like this is the first time that, that I'm not taking pictures of the bodies. So it's kind of something different, uh, as well as uh, this is the first time that it's something like uh, interactive or animated. Uh, I don't know, that's so like, I did the, the thing of the animation with the game stuff, but it wasn't interactive. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just press on, we've got about seven more. Uh, Anna? Yeah, um, I, I really love working here. Okay. I always feel like you show me something thought about, so it's very compelling. Um, I, what's interesting is I, I listen and am intrigued by your interest in the, um, the artificial, artificial intelligence and, you know, manipulation genetically. But I, I go more, especially with this work, to the other issue of how humans have had different cultures and a tendency to want to control nature. Um, long ago, I took a trip to Mexico when I was quite young, in the uh, early 70s, and I remember these indigenous women would be selling maybe three oranges in a market, another woman, two bananas, and they were 
often, you know, very imperfect and how delicious the food tastes. And that sort of brought me to a place of thinking how we've, you know, with time, modern man has tried to really control everything. Um, so I, I think it would be interesting to look at uh, even that place where various cultures have worked with control, like bonsai, the, the potatoes made me think of bonsai, where, where, where would the plant naturally go? Yeah, the, the, and then our control. You were talking about the, the small uh, yeah. size. Yes, yeah. 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 And then the, your body, too, makes me think a lot about Bucho work and to really study what that came out of. So um, I, I may be bringing up a lot of things, but this is what, how I'm responding is these various places where, and not leaving for now the good bad out of it, but places where we you know, put our hand in not letting nature go its natural course. And then again, where nature, there's all kinds of plants that there's an odd one that comes out. Tree, fruit, vegetable, and what that's all about. Yeah. Also like in this work, I'm I'm not I'm not saying like you said, I'm not talking about something bad or good, like nature is uh, in nature independence is good and and artificial stuff uh, is bad. Uh, I think it just is something that is happening, and I want to to highlight that, and I want to show this kind of uh, merge of words. And so, yeah, like I'm not in one side or in another one. So, so should we just switch to comments? We can hear everybody. Last week, so, so just like. <laughs> I thought again that I might be some sort of spy or security camera. Uh, but it's like this, I'm still not uh, an active participator, I'm just like playing something. So I wonder if you could virtually create an ambience where you have like a camera and you can actually put it on the internet, like live feed, and anyone could go anytime. Yeah, I was thinking exactly that. Like, is there a way to, I mean, I, I really like sort of circling around with the, with the site, um, and I, but I wonder how can I actually really be in it? So I don't know, you would have to talk to Anna MacArthur about making yourself a hologram or something, but like how can, how can we actually enter the space and be a part of this landscape on a larger scale? But I mean, those are formal issues and things to experiment with, but yeah. in terms of I mean, what my questions are, um, are, you still, are you still growing potatoes? Yeah, um, I, have, uh, I have some pictures of my, yeah, <laughs> I'm growing some potatoes in the water. Yeah, nice. yeah to see what I call the, yeah, the process. So oh, they're going well. Yeah. So I'm glad that you're still doing that. Um, I mean, I, 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 I'm interested in the idea of hybrid and what that is. I'm interested in the idea of subjectivity of beauty and it's like when we, we select something there's an aesthetic reason why we're selecting it. So is it beautiful for your, what's beautiful for your brother to choose to peel is different from what you choose to peel so I'm interested in the subjectivity of beauty. Um, and I'm also interested in your struggle with um, objectifying him. So there's this, he is, I, I, I wonder if you're excluding him. I mean, I know how much he loves to be a part of your project. So are you, is there, how is that related to what we would discard as a part of a bigger picture? Like a potato. We're going to do whatever they have this part of the experience. Um, how, does that, how does that sort of swirl in with your struggle with objectifying? So that it gets to be a really interesting point. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't thought about it like that. So you might, I mean, you might. I don't I'm know. Also just, I, it's just something to think about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, 
Paolo? Yeah, uh, that's quite information. Uh, long work uh, made by an artist of the Cobra where he was growing potatoes in a small part of his body. And then was his balance, this potato that was modified uh, in a pile of other potatoes. So you can recognize it by some body parts with natural potatoes and then just to make this, this work okay. uh, be interesting to see. Okay, thank you. Uh, Wendy? Um, I have this urge for you to peel the potatoes. Like, take the skin off. What's underneath the potatoes? I mean, at the core of every potato, it's the same thing. You know? And I think that there's a line that you could continue with that. And you're very, not objectifying, but you know, you're looking more at the, the, you know, the superficiality of what it looks like on the outside. But I think it would be interesting to take the reject potatoes that your brother doesn't want and peel those and compare them to the ones that you're growing. And, you know, getting inside, getting inside the potato. <laughs> is what I mean? You know, I just for some reason I just want you to peel them. Do something with peels, like these pieces. Okay. I like peel. Yeah. yeah. Just something I'm picking up on now, having spent a little bit more time looking at the second piece. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm struck. My initial impression of that piece was that it was kind of quiet. I found it quite, not disturbing exactly, but the sort of the space was quite claustrophobic. Which one? This one behind you, yeah. And it has a kind of almost a medical kind of this, not quite sure what might happen there until you tell us. And that seems quite at odds with your description of this as being like almost like a happy space that your brother likes to have in. And, and that's, that's kind of interesting. I, I just wondered how you felt about the possibility that for you it has a very particular sort of resonance, but for other people they might have a quite different association, particularly with these sort of quite disembodied hands that are kind of, you yeah. think something's kind of coming around the corner. Of you. And at first I wasn't sure if it was you or your brother, you know, I wasn't sure if that was actually you that you'd inserted into that yeah. space as well. So, uh, how do you feel about that possibility that actually it might have quite a different interpretation? Are you, are you happy for that to, to yeah. float out in that way? Yeah, also, um, he, I, I don't know his name, the one that has the, like, the crazy hair. Michael. Michael. Yeah, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Michael said, like, that, like, I, he doesn't think that he's working there with like a, in a like in a nice environment or perhaps a, <coughs> a, how do you say like uh, well yes yeah, in a nice environment happy, happy or or like the best conditions mm -hmm. but no no but I mean it looks like that perhaps like as you're saying like different kind of consuming the work uh, but it's nothing like that really so yeah I kind of Anybody could just grab it and, and start um, playing with it. So yeah, I don't feel like it. and and perhaps because of my right, my brother my entirely isn't there all, only his hands. It also has like this kind of okay. Perhaps it's not. I mean, if I don't explain that, perhaps you don't know that and you don't feel like okay, he's working. I mean, perhaps it's only hands in the kitchen. I don't know. Just, I, I don't mind. I mean, I, yeah, I think that's absolutely fine. I'm just struck by the very different atmosphere for me yeah. with this one when I first came to it, as opposed yeah. to the other one, which seems more neutral. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, I think we, we like to say, we all bring our own baggage down, that kind of mm -hmm. tile with them sort of slightly run down, and you know, something happens here, we're not quite sure what happens here. Mm -hmm. You know, and knowing that now, I kind of feel happy about it. Um, did you did you want to hear quickly from Stephanie? And finish. Oh, just to kind of tying other people's in. Uh, I would like to see his hands when you describe them verbally more closely. I want to see the I want to see the cuts, and I think it would be really cool to see two 
separate videos or one where you are changing the potatoes that one would pick up with other <coughs> Yeah, I think that the last year I, I, I showed some, I couldn't see like uh, cards or whatever, but I 